Good afternoon, YouTube. Let's have a look, see what's going on in the garden. It is the end of April, 28th, or 29th. I think it's the 28th, to be exact. Um, usually by now, we are beyond our last frost date, and it's safe to plant. However, I've been checking the 10-day forecast, and the uh, we had a frost last night. And we've got one more day, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, where we might have a frost as well. It's going to be obnoxiously cold overnight in any case. And so I have not planted my tomatoes yet or my squash for fear of that they're too delicate and will get uh, hurt by the frost. And... So, um, that's why this whole end of the garden is still kind of empty. But, from the previous videos, remember this whole area is covered with leaves. The leaves are gone. They're either mulched up and thrown in the compost bin, or they've been placed in the lawn waste bin and carted off. Um, I've only got so much room for compost. So, to reiterate... Over here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six holes dug for tomatoes and the only problem is I brought home a tomato and my wife took one look at it and goes, yeah, what you bring that home for? I don't want even you. I'm going to grow it anyway. Um, probably down here or over there where that yellow stake is. I should probably explain what that yellow rope is. Um, so the garden, let me just explain the, the layout here. The garden along the fence is divided into three areas by these sage plants, okay? And the uh, I rotate what I grow in each one. So this is the smaller one, has onions growing in them. Uh, they're kind of cold stunted because it's been so cold, but eh, they seem to be jumping up pretty good. So I'm going to uh, keep them going and hope for the best. <coughs> Uh, bush type sweet peas these will not grow very tall they're only going to make it to about the top of that line right there uh, I've had non bush type uh, sweet peas that have exceeded the height of the fence not going to happen this year there's the sage plant by the way last year the tomatoes were over there this year they're going to be over here so, because they're very tall, they're going across the back of the fence. Uh, that's the north side of the garden. Uh, sun is over my shoulder behind us. And so I've got six holes dug out, which I've got to amend with um, compost to make them ready to accept the tomatoes. And then I've got, I, I struck a baseline here. And my squashes are going to go here. And I put these white cups on the spots where the squashes are going to go. And from one squash plant to the other, you notice that they're zigzagged. I'm going to make a uh, another video showing you how I lay this all out. But I lay it out, I'll give you the short, TLDR, laid out in equilateral triangles. And we start with a baseline right there. And then we lay out there to that little stick that you can't see, to that to that stick right there, to that, you're looking about 30 inches between each spot. And that's about the correct spacing for the squash plant. So then, from here to here is 30 inches, and from here to there is 30 inches. So you got a 30 by 30 by 30 equilateral triangle. And then it's 30 inches to there, back to there is 30, and then up to the corner is 30 again. So you got one, two, three equilateral triangles. And oh look, here's one more. And over here as well. And probably I'm going to put another one right there where the, uh, the garden claw is. So by laying them out this way, I get the tightest uh, spacing. It's 30 inches from, from any one, from any one squash, from any one plant to another it's 30 inches, okay? There's no more than 30 inches between them. Um, anyways, these need to be worked up, but again, 
uh, no sense doing that until um, until the weather warms up a little bit. Maybe the end of next week we'll get all this in, and I'll uh, I'll post a uh, an update. Um, but let's see. I usually plant two zucchinis, two yellow squash, two patty pans, and then I've got two additional spots there to plant. Maybe because I've got more than two of each. Uh, my seeds have been, uh, my, my, my starts have been pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is along the baseline, I'm actually not going to space them 30 inches apart. I've got some lemon cucumbers and some fingerling eggplants, which are uh, said to have to plant on 18-inch spacing. So I'm going to go down here doing 18-inch spacing on this, and I will plant my lemon cucumbers and fingerling eggplants in there. And that's how we managed to get all that in. These two sticks, these two sticks, one, two, indicate where I'm going to dig up a bed, uh, amend it with fertilizer, uh, not fertilizer, compost and fertilizer, and grow the green beans. But the green beans um, like warm soil, and as such, the uh, we can wait until uh, a couple of weeks till it really gets warm to get those put in. So that's going to be the last thing. The green beans are always the last thing I put in the garden. Um, although I did jump the gun. <laughs> I do have some green beans and I had some space in this bed. So I did plant a row of green beans. Realized, oh wait, we're maybe a little early right here, green beans. And so I have these makeshift greenhouses, see, <laughs> to keep the soil warm and hope the uh, the beans will grow. Over here I've got some pole beans going to grow on the side of this trellis here and they are actually sprouting. Wait, you can't see it. There, sprouting. See? See it? See it right there? Got a couple of them. have already come up. Uh, I might have planted about eight seeds in there. You need to come up here and lean on. Okay, let go of that. Come up here and grab a hold of that, please. There, go up the trellis. Oh, I see what your problem is here. Let me get rid of that. There you go. There you go, plant. There you are. And you can see the sweet peas are actually just doing what they usually do. Um, let me get my shadow out of the picture here. Um, salad greens can go in before the last frost date. And I've got companion plants here to keep the marigolds help uh, chase away some of the pests and they've actually been pretty good at that uh, we have do have a few slug bitten leaves here but uh, I think I've pretty much eradicated the slugs except what's that I see a trail there I haven't eradicated them completely so we'll have to come out here at night and do a little more slug hunting um, but you can see I've done the same thing here. Get out of the light here. I've still got some of my pins in here. So here's one, two, three right there. Uh, they are on 12 inch centers, and yeah, maybe 10. And what I do is I'm planting, uh, let me just shoot down the row here and you can see from that all the way down those two lettuces to the spinach down there at the end. You see they're in a diagonal row. And if you go from here to here to here, you have an equilateral triangle. From here to the pin to there is another equilateral triangle. And I've actually planted them just a little bit off the point. They're more in the equilateral triangle, not, not on the points like I have the squash. Um, but as you look, you can see the, uh, the equilateral triangle layout of the garden right there with the two red lettuces and the green one. And I've still got a few spots here where I can still grow something, but I'm out of seedlings. At least uh, lettuce seedlings. Um, so I don't know what to grow there. And the strawberries. Look at all the... Look at all the blossoms in here. In about three weeks, these are all going to be nice red fruits. Three or four weeks, just give them time. Um, I've got a frame right here. I'm going to throw a big bird net over this, uh, which is a, 
I'll do another video about how I've been growing strawberries and the um, and the methods I've used to uh, to keep pests out of my strawberries. And uh, uh, that'll be a few more weeks before I do that. Um, so watch for that. Uh, it's been a bit of a challenge. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> And my Knault, my Knault strawberry experiment is working this year. It's actually flowering. I've got two blossoms and another one coming up. <laughs> and look at the oregano go. Look at this. And the thyme is also actually doing, got some really good, the thyme has got some really good shoots on it. The empty one is for basil. And the chives are going to seed nice and the rosemary is just going gangbusters time to do some of that and under here parsley is coming up in fact there's a parsley looking flower or not a flower but a leaf right there zoom in come on focus anyway so everything we need to make our own italian spice blend we eat a lot of pizzas around here let me come over here i want to show you the greenhouse look at all the green in the greenhouse <coughs> Oh. my lemon cucumbers, a couple of them have uh, failed, but you can see I've got a yellow, you can see how big that thing is, that thing in its four inch pot, it needs this big, I would have put it in the ground, uh, if it was a warmer year, this thing would have been in the ground uh, a week or more ago, but it's been so obnoxiously cool at night, that I'm afraid I'd kill them if I had them out in the ground. And you can see also here, I've got tomatoes that are just going like gangbusters here. And uh, they want to be in the ground. I have transplanted these two. These are for my mother-in-law. I've transplanted them because I'm not going to be seeing her for about two, at least two weeks uh, on Mother's Day when I bring these to her. And by the time... They would just be so overgrown and root-bound in, in their four-inch pots that I had to put them in a five-inch pot. Anyways, but yeah, you can see the sizes. I'm going to back this thing out. I can't even hold it at uh, arm's length to show you how, uh, uh, how big these things are. So I'm really hoping that uh, they do well. Anyways, there's a couple of lemon cucumbers that are doing well, the ones in the little yogurt cups. Um, and then some companion plants. These are uh, dwarf zinnias. A couple of dwarf marigolds that didn't... Look at all the empty spots that didn't germinate. Some that did, but um, I don't know. <laughs> I've got at least three kinds of plants in here. that can't all be marigolds. So I don't know exactly what all I've got in here. And then these are real marigolds, tall marigolds, that I'm going to companion plant with the uh the tomatoes so there's yeah a little tongue depressor zucchini that's another zucchini another yellow back there patty pan patty pans another couple of yellows i have a lot of yellow squash this year <laughs> anyway that that is the tour of the greenhouse and you see i've got a lot of compost bin that i'm working up here um, and it's actually when you touch it you feel the warmth on it it's actually it's actually very warm and it's doing a very nice job of keeping this greenhouse warm at night to the point that this heater doesn't even come on uh, which is good so um, that is oops got my finger out of the picture that is I'm gonna back out of the greenhouse here let me give you an overview of the garden. Only people like to see the overview. So that's the garden in uh, late April. Uh, it should be all planted, but uh, the weather's not cooperating. Uh, let's give it another week uh, or two. I hope not two. Let's just give it another week. And uh, I'll give you an update. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and share it with somebody. Hit the like if you want to uh, keep following the progress of the garden. Hit subscribe. Have a good afternoon. Happy gardening.